uh, of talk as well about immigration at the moment because uh, charts have shown how the surge in students, uh, health workers and their families, as well as the fallout from Ukraine and Hong Kong, has pushed up the inflow. One, with inflow. Well, one man who knows this back to front is, of course, Henry Bolton, who's an international borders expert. Great to have you on the programme. How are you, Henry? Thanks. I'm very well, Peter. Uh, not, uh, probably you. doing a lot better than the government. 745,000 uh, net migration. These are legal people. These are not the illegal people. No, These are and, the legal people. And this is three times higher than their manifesto pledge. Where is it all coming? Where are they all coming from? Why are they coming here? I mean, a lot of... We had a texter earlier on talking about the inflows from uh, from uh, relatives of people, mm -hmm. from dependents and so on. That's a huge part of this picture as well, isn't it? it it's, it's a very complex picture. But what we see, really, is um, a very liberal uh, approach to the visa regime. So, for example, you've just mentioned, uh, well, you alluded to, I think, um, the, the, the student population yes. that comes over here. Well, there are two things about that. One is that we have now created uh, an adult education system, universities, that are commercial enterprises that exist solely, that survive solely on the income they get from yeah. foreign students. And they are They're very not, keen to have those foreign they students, are, aren't but that, they? But, yes. well, not, not only are they very keen, it is their business mm -hmm. model mm -hmm. is to exploit foreign students who pay to come here. Now, you could argue that that, is, that leads to, uh, that's an income to the UK. It creates jobs in those universities, although their, their main emphasis is not educating British people. It's, it's, it's educating foreign people. And, and that, that could indeed have a, a knock-on effect. There's positives about this. But when you combine it with a government policy that says, well, actually, in all sorts of respects, you have the ability then to remain in the UK after you've completed your studies, and you can bring dependents with you, and they can stay in the UK after you've, you've finished mm -hmm. your studies. There are all sorts of ways that can happen. Then you lose control of the whole system. It's exploited by business. It, it facilitates business, yes, jobs, but then these people don't return. They stay here. Do they get jobs? Well, that's an interesting thing because, again, if you look at that, the ONS figures for, for GDP for the nation are going up per capita. So if you divide that by the number of people here, it's going down. And that can only be as a result of our, our, our individual wealth, if you like, is going down as a result of the increase in population. So what? And, sorry, what I was going to say. Yeah. And the other thing is that you know, if you're looking at way areas where you can reduce the the inflow, um, our visa regime is almost exploitative of foreign workers. So it's unfair. Even if you're a socialist or you're a sort of you know a union person, you should be saying, well, this is appalling because you if on low skilled worker um, visas you come in on eighty percent of the salary mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that you that a normal British worker would would receive. And actually, uh, so I, I jotted down a couple of figures before I came on. A senior care worker, instead of getting the minimum wage of what is what is it eleven forty four now? Yes, um, it's a senior care worker would get £7.63 an hour if they're foreign and they come in. But the agencies that that organise this are actually charging, if, if there's a care home that needs an agency worker, mm -hmm. the agency is, is charging more, way more, than yes. that, some, uh, probably th almost three times and the amount. And they're making they're, a huge they're profit. They're making a huge yeah. amount of money. We're bringing people on in, in an exploitative on exploitative salaries, um, and we're undermining our own work. Uh, the, uh, the, and that the is people, that is a huge workforce. problem. We've been so talking complex. The yeah. government's been talking about this this week in terms of how on earth you get the over a million people hmm. who are not working and haven't worked and can work back to work and mm. lots of people say well look you know british people often won't pick fruit they won't do mm. care worker jobs some of them do but some but some of them sort of refuse to uh, how do you square that because that to me if you still if you have virtually uncontrolled immigration and, uh, and an inflow of cheap labor mm. well there's very little incentive to try to get people who are here already back to work isn't absolutely it? if you're if you're a farmer and you want you, you, you know or you, you're, you're bringing in a foreign worker, or you're, you wouldn't need a worker to pick fruit for you, then you've got a choice. You bring in a foreign worker and you charge them £7.38, an, or get, pay them £7.38 an hour, or you bring them in on the minimum wage and pay them 11 44 an hour. Yeah. So the government itself, through its policy, is undermining mm. our own ability to employ our own people because, of course, it's less attractive you know, th yeah. for, for the employer to do that. Um, the, the other thing, I think, to bear in mind is that 
um, all of this is the result of deliberate government policy. None of this is accidental. The fact that you can bring in l lower uh, uh, people on a lower uh, salary yeah. is government policy. It is mm. their own fault. And instead of doing that, why don't they put money into, for example, education of nurses and health, health workers? If you are from the Philippines or some such place, the government will pay for your training to be a care worker or whatever it might be, or a, or a nurse. If you if you are British, you have to pay for that, a, a, yeah. a great deal of that, yeah. yourself, yeah. take out a student loan perhaps, mm. um, and then you're paying that back. So it undermines your salary. So you're going to look for another career. So you're competing... The, the, the comp competitiveness yeah. is very, very much skewed against the British worker. So there are all of these things. Now, they're not directly related to borders. They are immigration, and one of the problems we have, I think, well, is... Well, there are factors within it, definitely. They are, yeah. because they are... What we, when we talk about pull factors, these are the pull factors. They're mm. created by government policy. Yeah. The government could change this. It's still got a massive majority mm. in, in the House of Commons probably change dramatically at the next yeah, election, indeed. whenever that is, but, but the government has this in its own hands to solve. And that is one of the terrible things about this politically, is, as I say, it is a matter of government, deliberate government policy. Yeah. This isn't just negligence mm. or incompetence, mm. it is deliberate policy. And they, that, I'm afraid, is it means that government has lied to the British people. Well, thank you for explaining that to us so clearly, uh, Henry. Leon has been in touch on Twitter. He says immigration was a major factor in Brexit, but free movement and its effects on wages were, uh, was what Britons were concerned. These migrants were still mm. respected. Andre is in Wiltshire. He's giving me a call on 0344 499 1000. Um, Andre, you're very welcome to the programme. Give me your thoughts this morning. Good morning. Um, well, you, you've, got to, you've got to understand that the government at the moment is ignorant to the facts that are put before them. And if the people have got, have been lied to for so long that they, they become complacent at trying to actually listen to anything what the government says. So you, you think because the uh, government has, in your case, in your uh, point, lied to us that we're just not listening to them anymore, it's kind of the well, connection, yeah, I mean, the connection's gone? Yeah, the, the connection between government and, and, and the population of this country has been lost in, in its in its lies. And they, they, it doesn't matter whether it's, it's Labour, Conservative, Liberals or whatever, nobody is listening to the government anymore because they just lied so much. But, you know, well, <laughs> if they've gone to hell in a handbasket, there are a lot of them. OK, Andre, thanks very much indeed. Dave is in London. Let's hear what he has to say. Dave, good morning. Oh, hi, Taylor. How are you? Uh, very well, thanks, Steve. What point would you like to make? Uh, yeah, I just listened to what your guest, Henry, was saying, <clears throat> and uh, I, I'd just like to say that, yeah, I, I agree with all of that. And it's, it's a big thing to call people liars, but I am starting to wonder whether or not we really are being lied to. But the point I was going to make is was to do with um, uh, growth and migration. There is a way to put these two things together. I know it probably would never happen, but... This whole de idea of getting 0.06% growth and then having to flood the, flood the country with people to do it is, 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 is the big lie. And people are just not calling it out. It is about growth per capita. It's not about growth for growth's sake. If you were yeah. running a big company and you put a proposal to the board to say, we're going to grow our revenue by 0.06%. Well, firstly, the board's eyes would go up and say, is that all? I think, I think it's actually 0.6% next year is what it's, what it's forecast yeah, to be, but it's, it's still not very much. No, and if you were going to, if, as I said, if you were going to grow a company by that, and then you said your plan is to take on 300 salespeople yeah. to do it, I mean, you, the, the, the plan wouldn't work because you just say, well, it's not about growth. It's kind of about profit. I know we shouldn't. It's not really profit, but it kind of is. Yeah. Um, in no, I, I, I totally, I totally get your point, profit. Dave. In that there are, you know, you you, you can't simply say, well, it's because it's not really growth if you have more people, if you have more, uh, more people, and more people to to so serve within the country, uh, certainly within yeah. within what we have. Um, let me put that point, Dave. Thanks mm -hmm. so much for that point. That was Dave in London. Let me put that to Henry Bolton. That point on growth. It's a really good one from Dave, isn't it? It is. Um, but uh, you know. But growth is a funny thing, you know. Um, what we, we've also got to think about is the cost, not just the benefit, but the cost. And I, I give you, two days ago, I think it was when we, these figures first came out, 
And just before they revised last year's figures up from 606,000 to 740, uh, whatever it was, 1,000, 745. 45, I think, yeah. yeah. Um, I looked at that and I thought, what, you know, what city is comparative in, in, size, in population size? And I came up with Bristol. And it's somewhere between last year's figures and this year's. And anyway, so Bristol. Bristol has 100 second, uh, primary schools. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 50 secondary schools. Mm -hmm. has 13 police stations, six hospitals. So, and, you know, then there's the primary schools. Then there's, this, this, I think, six specialist medical clinics. And there's all the, all the road infrastructure, the housing and everything else. You need twice that to have been constructed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people to have been trained, so you can staff these police, 13 police stations and six hospitals and so on, all of that, per, procure all the equipment for them. And you've got to do all that in the space of, of 24 months if you are going to keep up with the rate of immigration. So, and where is that money coming in from in advance? It's not. You're constantly playing catch-up with these numbers. So that is one of the pressures. So when you talk about growth, well, if you've got to expend that, even in, in the longer term, if there's some sort of growth element, Let's say, let's be you know yep. optimistic about yeah. this, and then you say, well, actually, we're bringing in, the bulk of these visas are low skilled. Do they generate a great deal of wealth? Questionable. The ONS figures on on per capita versus national GDP are you know suggest yeah. that actually they're costing us money rather than than build, bringing us growth themselves. Um, but then you look at that simple cost of producing or building and staffing and equipping six hospitals, 13 police stations, um, and, and, and the well, you're doubling, the, the infrastructure, you're, you're doubling that. The so, infrastructure is so just not there. That's, just not that. that's in 12 months. So yeah, it'll yeah. be six, uh, 12 hospitals in yeah. 24 months, one every two months. It is simply not possible for us to do that. So you can mess around with growth figures or whatever you want, but the practicalities of this mm -hmm. are just simply not feasible. And that is why I think, you know, people are... There's, there's all the cultural element as well, because now, uh, and, and a point earlier that you mentioned if on your, uh, I think it was an email or a, Twitter, mm -hmm. a, a tweet or something, an X, um, somebody had talked about Brexit, and yet Brexit was about borders partly, but it, what it was, Brexit gave us, return to the United Kingdom, the ability to govern its own borders. Yeah. What we've seen subsequently is the government failing to do that. This is not... It, it's not happened because of Brexit. It has happened because our own politicians now have more autonomy to make their own decisions about what happens on our borders yeah, yeah. and our visas and our immigration and so on. And contrary to what we, those of us who supported Leave, wanted and expected and were promised, mm -hmm. the government has, instead of reducing immigration and exercised greater controls on our borders has actually lifted those controls yeah. Yeah, yeah. and that is the shocking thing here so when your earlier caller says you know we, we are starting not to listen i think a large proportion of the population has given up yeah. on that um over and over again it's, we've it's, been when a, it's when anger turns to complacency it is and that's what we've seen about. in dublin yeah well well that's, we're going to come on to that later mm. in the program as well uh, phil says morning peter it's less that we need it's, it's fewer people we need in this country not more immigrants get old too just take a leaf out of countries like india too many people overcrowded poor quality of life and no future that's why these people are coming here in their thousands and if we don't stop it uh, before long we're exactly like them a third world country it makes me weep says phil uh, Mitch says Peter pretty much every year for the last 20 years businesses have told us that they need migrant workers to fill 1 million job vacancies over that time we've probably brought in something like 7 or 8 million migrants mm -hmm. into the country yet apparently we still uh, have the same way of life which makes you wonder why they come here in the first place says Mitch and the uh, same rates of, uh, of unemployment pretty yeah, much yeah, yeah. you know the, we've, uh, these these all these this 1 million vacancies or whatever all right well we bring in a million yeah. a million immigrants and we've still got a million it, vacancies it doesn't, doesn't quite add up um, <laughs> so, yeah John is in Wales and he says more uh, morning Peter morning John uh, student visas should not include their dependents other than their spouse uh, students are here to study not to game the system perhaps student visas are being abused they certainly are John mm -hmm. uh, add to this the billions we send overseas in foreign aid by law the hundreds of millions given to France to police their own shores surely our millions are better spent building up the UK police service and protecting UK borders I want to go to Jackie in Manchester who's given me a call on 0344 499 1000 Jackie you're very welcome to the programme what would you like to say Good morning, Peter. Good morning, morning Henry. Um, morning. I, I would like to talk about the democratic implications of politicians promising us 
things and not delivering. I mean, if we go back to from Tony Blair, which he increased the population massively, and then from then on, we've had the Conservatives continu- continue in this phase. We have repeatedly, since 2016, given the vote, re- voted a lot of people to reduce immigration. Mm. So on one hand, we've got the manifestos that don't mean a thing because they re- they've repeatedly promised and the population has increased. And then you've got the, the, the fact that we've had referendums and where does, where does this leave us democratically? Because yeah. how can we trust the politicians who don't deliver and what does this do to democracy? Let's ask Henry that exact question, Jackie. I think uh, I, uh, Jackie O is, uh, in a former life, uh, the leader of a political party. And I, you know, I, I, I am absolutely p- pulling my hair out, what little there is of it left, um, over exactly this point. It, politicians are there, the, the military, Sandhurst has a, has a motto, serve to lead. You, you serve the people that you lead. And that doesn't mean to say you always do what they want. You've got to lead them. You've got to inspire them. You've got to give them direction. You've got to give them unity of effort and, and, in, uh, and, and, and drive them forward, increase their morale and their confidence and so on in you as a leader, but also in where you're taking them. But, but you're there to serve them. And the politicians that are present... Uh, generation of politicians seem to have totally forgotten that sort of ethos. The manifestos should be an intended programme of government. Mm-hmm. So this is what we would do. It's not, though. That, I mean, obviously, sometimes situations change, wars break out and, and so on, and you end up with a situation where you have to change what you promised. But then you tell the public why yeah. and what you're going to do. Um, you be honest and you be open about it. And uh, you know, if you fail to do that, you know, and you simply produce a marketing tool mm-hmm. to gain people's votes, well, you know, you do that once or twice, and people see through it, yeah. and then people, then you don't, you don't follow up on it, you don't do what you promised, you don't even try, you don't explain why you've changed, and so people just go, well, what the hell is this about? Mm-hmm. You've told us what you would do, you got our vote for it, um, and now you're not doing it. That is, I mean, okay. There's, is that lying or is it simply deception? Let's uh, get Jackie's uh, reaction. I think that's wrong, oh, wrong, gonna... wrong, and wrong. And you're right, Jackie, about it being fundamentally damaging to, to dem- democracy. Got to go to a break in just a second. But Jackie, perhaps give us your reaction briefly to what Henry has said there. I agree with everything that you said. Unfortunately, we've got two main parties that basically w- immigration is going to go up. So where does that leave the voters? <sighs> Uh, yeah. can, can I just very quickly come yeah. on back on that, Pat, Pete? You're, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, but I think, you know, one of the, the dynamics that we're seeing at the moment is in particularly the Conservative Party, there are some people who would be sitting here and agreeing ex- with every word you say and every word I say, Jackie. And they want to change things. Now, the question is, will they be successful? Uh, you know, there are other parties out there who are, who are, who are putting themselves forward. Um, that's good. I think, you know, the more people in the mix, in a sense, and the more ideas, the better. However, um, where is their experience and where is their credibility to actually deliver on what they're saying? And are, and are, so they, being, and are they being listened to by the leadership And as are well? they being any different in yeah. terms of their honesty and their marketing? Henry, thank you so much. You're it's welcome. been a fascinating sort of 20, 25 minutes or so.